welcome to the program. This is Investment Trends brought to you with the compliments of ZDA and ZNBC. Uh, today on the program, we have a very interesting guest, and we have the chairperson for the Zambia Private Sector Alliance. And today, we're looking at the business environment from the private sector's perspective. Now, government has been working to improve the business environment in the country and promoting a private sector-led economic strategy. This can be seen through initiatives such as the Private Sector Development Reform Program and through the Zambia Development Agency. These initiatives are meant to reduce the cost of doing business in the country, encouraging competitiveness in the private sector, and of course, promoting investment. Like I mentioned earlier, this week, our guest on the program is Mr. Geoffrey Sakulanda, who is the chairperson um, of the Zambia Private Sector Alliance. Hello, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's good to have you on Investment Trends today. Always a pleasure. Right. So we're talking about the business environment from mm. the private sector's uh, perspective. Right. Let's just lay the foundation of how, um, how the things are right there when you go out, the environment in terms of business in this country uh, in relation to how the private sector is participating. Okay. Maybe before I do, um, can I just give you um, a quick um, rundown on who I speak for when we talk about the Zambia Private of Sector course, Alliance. Of course, uh, The Br Zambia Private Sector Alliance is composed of um, uh, all the uh, significant business associations in Zambia. I'm talking about uh, here the, the Chamber of Mines, mm -hmm. uh, the Zambia Chamber of Commerce and Industries, the Zambia Association of Manufacturers, the Tourism Council of Zambia, um, the um, Zambia Chamber of Small and small and medium scale businesses. Uh, I'm talking here about uh, the, um, the National Council of Construction in terms of the, the UBCHEC, which is the Association of Building and Contracting um, as, you know, uh, Companies mm -hmm. Association. So it's really just cuts across, including the Zambia National Farmers Union. So we are basically speaking here about the perspectives delivered to us or through me uh, you know, about the sentiment coming from the business sector right across all the sectors in the economy of Zambia. Mm -hmm. um, now, talking about the perspective of private sector in terms of how we see the business environment in Zambia, uh, if you were to allow me uh, grade that on a scale of 1 to 10, um, there are some highs and lows depending on where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in manufacturing, you've got a different perspective. If you're in mining, it's a different perspective. If you are trading across borders, it's a different perspective. If you're in the tourism sector, it's a, you know, but using the law of averages, I would say on a scale of one to 10, we would be looking at six. Okay, right. that's above average. Above average, satisfactory, just, just about. The talk of diversification, because this is a song that the government has been singing for a long time now. Um, is that an agenda for you as well? It's a huge agenda because it plays into an entrepreneur's um, objectives. Uh, we have always sung the song of diversification. If you recall, uh, if you can recall, from the very early days of Zambia's uh, uh, birth, from the Kaunda times, I'm sure that uh, President Kaunda kept singing the same song, especially the time when copper prices collapsed and this economy uh, started going through very difficult times. Uh, President Kaunda then kept talking to Zambians to talk about agriculture. Let's diversify the economy because copper will not be with us forever. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everybody remembers that song. Today, the current president, our president uh, uh, Edgar Lungu, that's the same message because we all realize that depending on the resource we have underground, we will not sustain the economy forever. And in any case, even when the prices improve, what we've seen is that new investment going in the mines is not labor intensive. They are using more machinery. So for, for, from the employment perspective, it doesn't grow employment numbers because the increase in mining jobs is just marginal because there's usage of technology more. So that justifies the song we all sing about diversifying the economy. We must diversify away from <coughs> dependence on copper. Mm -hmm. We must go into agriculture. 
we must utilize the large tracts of land and abundance of water that Zambia has been endowed with to generate growth from the agricultural sector and more beyond just cropping, but you know, um, uh, add value adding in terms of processing food to generate food that can be available to the market through seasons. You don't have to rely on rain, wait for rain in order to grow food. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of just moving away from mining for the private sector, when you look at the seventh national development plan um, um, direction as well, what areas or sectors are attractive that somebody can get into and, and invest? Um, perhaps we should take a lead from what the president has been saying uh, for the past one year or so. Uh, you know, and that is reflected in his uh, speech when he opened parliament soon after being inaugurated. I think that uh, also the efforts he has made over the past few months uh, going to countries where, uh, you know, um, which possess lots of, you know, uh, potential in terms of investment capital and technology. Mm -hmm. um, he has constantly emphasized agriculture. Uh, he has constantly emphasized um, tourism. He is also emphasizing the need for mining to go beyond e the mere extraction of raw materials to uh, processing uh, because those are the areas which will lead to more wealth creation as well as job creation. Mm -hmm. um, and we agree. Uh, the argument which has always been there, and we discussed this in a um, ease of doing business conference we held at the beginning of the, uh, of I think May, sometime in May in Livingston. Uh, something we also touched on when we hosted a business uh, conference right here in Lusaka. Uh, the issues are that although those areas continue to be attractive, Zambians do not have the capacity, have not been given the opportunity to invest in these extremely high value investment areas. I'm talking about mine and mine processing, including manufacturing. Uh, if you see, look around the country, any significant business of value, of significance, which manufactures, you know, substantial amounts of goods or value, they are in hands of, you know, um, foreign, foreign owners. Right. Why is that so? It's not for want of having lack of entrepreneurial skills in Zambia. It's the issue of access to affordable finance. Most of these factories you see, most of the imp, 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 you know, heavy equipment you see, uh, most of the heavy investments you see are funded from money sourced from outside the Zambian financial system. Mm -hmm. So much as we would like to move in these areas, the issue is access to finance. We have a lot of banks, a lot of commercial banks uh, in excess of 17 now, or is it about 17? but all of them are commercial banks. There's no investment bank. Uh, DBZ is supposed to play the role of long-term lender, but you and I know it's hobbled by financing issues. Mm -hmm. They do not have the depth in terms of capa financial capacity to be able to respond to the huge demand for long-term investment money in the, in the country. Um, so most Heavy investment, most large-scale investments have to look to the outside for that kind of thing. Now, you ask yourself, despite these discussions that have taken place between private sector and government, why is nothing happening to make this financing available? Hmm. Of course, one can argue that government is not in the business of doing business, okay? Uh, but government provides the environment and the platform which becomes the launch pad for business to move forward. They, they, I can give you very quick examples in countries that have developed at a fast pace who were in the same situation as we were at 1965 when we, Zambia was born. I'm talking Malaysia, Singapore, uh, South Korea, now the biggest example, China. Uh, there are sectoral banks there. There would be a construction bank, an agricultural bank, because you need to compartmentalize the business needs of private sector. It doesn't have to be private sector, but just business. Right. Because the commercial banks have only short-term money. The banks we have, in the, they are short-term money. They are depositors funds, which are, must be available on call. Whenever you put in your two million kwacha in the bank, 
if you decide you can withdraw most of it next week. So the banks are always waiting, keeping, the, they invest only short term because they know the owners of the money may call up upon it to, to, to withdraw it. Mm -hmm. So that money is not available to business to be lent on lent on a longer term basis. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about collaborations um, that you have as an alliance. We have um, a whole lot of collaboration between the ministries. Like I said, the alliance is a mouth sectoral. Mm -hmm. So our colleagues in the Chamber of Mines are constantly in touch and collaborating and discussing ideas with the Ministry of Mines. The colleagues in transport do the same. We at the Chamber of Commerce are doing the same. The people, we, our colleagues at the Zambia Association of Manufacturers, always at the Ministry of Commerce discussing the difficulties that they have to, to deal with. So the engagement is there. And this is part of the reason why we created what we're calling the Zambia, uh, the ZDA, Z Zambia Private Sector Alliance Forum. Because ZDA being the point at which all government efforts to attract investment are discussed. Mm -hmm. The Zambia Private Sector Alliance and ZDA have formed this partnership where the private sector brings the issues that have been in discussion with government for a long time or those that require action because from the ZDA we can then present one one point request to government to uh, confirm that in terms of priority government needs to look at the following issues because private sector requires that these be dealt with in order to improve the business environment okay yeah all right, just for our viewers out there, this is Investment Trends, and I'm talking to Mr. Geoffrey Sakulanda, who is the chairperson of the Zambia Private Sector Alliance. Well, let's take a quick break and uh, look at this uh, particular clip where we speak to some ZDA officials on how they interact with the private sector in promoting Zambia's growth and development. Take a look. One of the things that we would like to um, do as ZDA is to ensure that we collaborate with the private sector. One of our objectives in our strategic plan indicates that we must build collaborative engagement with stakeholders and partners. And looking at the private sector, they are very key um, to the development of the economy and the country at large. So this effort is aimed at ensuring that um, they are able to deliver on what they are able to, um, their, their mandate. So ZDA is a facilitator working under the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry to try and create uh, more jobs, um, bring about industrialization, investment promotion, um, trade and promotion of uh, exports, including uh, the small businesses. We're a large part of our Zambian uh, uh, stakeholders are. So it is important uh, that we create this collaborative engagement. And one of the things that we do is uh, a survey in collaboration with the Bank of Zambia, Central Statistics Office, and ourselves as Zambia Development Agency. Every year we want to know the capital flows, uh, the concerns of the investment community, and then look at these and um, be able to link um, with the ministry through the, with government through the Ministry of uh, Commerce, Trade, and Industry to see how we can uh, see that there are policies that are responsive to uh, business community and also institutional reforms. You realize that we have the private sector development reform program and um, job creation uh, program sitting at cabinet. And they are looking at changing policies and looking at ease of doing business. In the past few years, you've seen that Zambia has been ranked among the best 10 in Africa, in SADC, in Comesa. And I think it's partly because of the role that ZDA is doing through with, uh, in collaboration with uh, the private sector. So for us, as I mentioned earlier, it is important and we work with uh, the private sector to bring on board their concerns. We are here to listen, we are a facilitator and uh, implementing some of the uh, issues and policies that government brings about. So through the ZDA Act, we are able to give incentives and facilitate investment promotion and we are passionate especially about the small businesses. 
and our strategic plan aims at transforming business for the benefit of Zambians. We can't do that work without uh, the private sector. So looking at the work that the private sector is really our core business. So our collaborative uh, engagements will continue and we'll continue to listen. Of course, there are various concerns that come from the private sector. And I think working under the private sector alliance we do have stakeholder engagements where we look at sectors such as energy, what are the concerns there. When there was um, um, a requirement for you know, investment in the energy sector, we engage with various uh, private sector players and the Ministry of uh, Energy to try and attract investment. And you're seeing some of the benefits coming through. This can only be done by working with the private sector. So we are proud of this uh, engagement and we hope that the private sector will always be willing to come to us and we'll continue to have a platform where we can discuss these issues. And one of the aims of this program, Investment Trends, is some, to showcase some of the things that are happening because I think there are so many success stories that are never told. We aim to show that uh, success stories are happening. They are not happening at ZDA. They are happening in, in uh, uh, different companies, small businesses, investors, big investors in the mining sector, in the energy sector. So we'd like to continue with these collaborative efforts to ensure that the economy grows. <laughs>
All right. Yeah. What are some of the initiatives or interventions that uh, the private sector is employing to foster wealth creation and development in Zambia? Well, perhaps uh, uh, I can say something naughty, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, one must acknowledge that uh, uh, people go into business for selfish reasons. It starts off either as a selfish motive to make money or to save a need in society. Mm. Some people start off more, starting more charitable than really money making because you think there is something that is amiss in society and you need to deliver a service to a needy part of society and it turns out to be lucrative eventually. Uh, so yes, you know, along the way, it's the, it ends up being business. Uh, but, you know, I think that uh, the private sector, once you start, it becomes like a drug. Mm -hmm. You want to go on and on and grow uh, and satisfy that desire to deliver a better service or a better good because you are getting that feedback from society which tells you you're on the right track. Mm. So, yes, it starts off as being a selfish uh, endeavor, eventually it becomes a public endeavor because you come into a public domain, you interact with government, and you must now become a partner of society as you go along. So it's um, what you perhaps would, for lack of a better term, call a symbiotic relationship from which both sides of the aisle benefit. Government is seeing its policies at work and ensuring that people, people's lives become a bit more predictable in the sense that they get employed, their children go to school, the quality of life improves, health improves. Um, on the other side, the person that produces the service or the good is making money and improving generally also the quality of life on the other side. As we wind up, uh, Mr. Sakulanda, your word of encouragement to those in the private sector, um, you know, obviously some of them are already your members through the alliance. Um, I know there are challenges in the private sector. You have your own challenges. Um, quickly highlighting on some of those challenges and how to overcome them and and let's you know move forward together as a country yeah well one could say you know um the business environment is not for the faint-hearted to start with it's not easy uh, whenever you see somebody talk about success it did not come overnight and nothing comes overnight if it does then it's magic and we know magic is not sustainable in the real life arena um, all success comes uh, from hard work I was just seeing reading something which says success does not you cannot get success through using an elevator you have to use the staircase meaning it's one step at a time mm -hmm. uh, and it requires perseverance it requires focusing it requires not being discouraged because there are a whole lot of forces that can discourage along the way. But eventually, if you look at all the success stories you know about, they came through a lot of hard work and sacrifice and remaining you know, true to the objective and the dream. Mm -hmm. um, it is extremely difficult. I have cited that uh, the business organizations that I'm representing here all have their various challenges they all talking to government at all the time because the only facilitator of the business environment is the government. Sometimes there is a contradiction uh, and that's why government tends to be uh, seen to be the enemy of business. Mind you, the government has an obligation to the larger population right. and therefore they sometimes craft laws and regulations that may begin to impinge on the freedoms of doing business or begin to create a burden in terms of tax regulations and all sort of other control mechanisms, which may be good for the public at large, sorry, but they tend to create bottlenecks for business. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we must have this dialogue. It's a continue, we will never get to a point where private sector will say we are now satisfied with government. Right. That doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Okay. We will continue to have to talk. This dialogue will have to continue and it's always nice to have a government that listens. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to report that we have a government that listens. Uh, the doors of government are open. We have access to government ministers at all times. We invite ministers to discussions. They respond. We're happy. Well. It's just that, you know, the bureaucracy of government 
uh, it works at a certain pace. Okay. So I'm you know, going to have to stop you there now. That's fine. Thank you so much for yeah. coming through to the program. Thank it's you been very a pleasure much. having you on Investment Trends. Thank you very much. Right. Well, this is where we wrap up the show. Thank you so much. I was talking to the chairperson of the private sector, Zambia Private Sector Alliance, Mr. Geoffrey Sakulanda, and we were talking on uh, the business uh, environment from the perspective of the private sector. This is where we wrap up. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another interesting topic on investment trends. Bye-bye.